Welcome, guys, to the uh, B stream here. We are going to be watching uh, Naaman versus Powder, which actually this is the second match of the group, so it might be the first match they played, I think. Uh, yeah, I wasn't really paying that much attention to the <laughs> yeah, neither of us. We got uh, hopped yeah, in yeah. here off of uh, off of the requirement for casters. Should be a good match anyways. I don't think either of these guys have played uh, yet at the very least because okay. their group was just starting and that was Lothar who was playing in the previous match. Yeah. So it should be good. Uh, the lineups are going to be Naaman is playing Mage, Shaman, Warlock, and his Warrior is banned. And Powder, Powder is playing Jude, Shaman, and Warrior. Just sip my refreshing beverage here. <laughs> Uh, what do you think? Like, who do you think's favored, just lineups wise? Um, oh, this is the losers match. In fact, so they have yeah. played already. So, person who loses this will be facing elimination, whereas the other one will have a chance to win uh, the next game and to advance still. Who's favored? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm a big mage fan, so I'll root for Neyman, I guess. <laughs> Although, are they both Anubis? What are you? I'm Horus. I'm Horus too. Oh, okay, yeah. so we have a vested interest in this match. <laughs> Though uh, I think both of them are Anubis, so then we actually don't even yeah we get no advantage out of this for our <laughs> Egyptian power team. I mean, Horus is gonna win anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I didn't watch the most recent mini game. Did you see who won? Oh, the fishing mini game. I didn't see yeah. it. Yeah, I was Did watching RDU catch one fish a minute. <laughs> Pretty enjoyable to watch. <laughs> who won though, Horus or Anubis? Uh, I I didn't catch the end of it. Oh, okay. I just, well, it should be a good series anyways. It looks like the players are just deciding uh, which class they want to pick first. You can see there's a pretty good amount of tension on both of their faces as, yeah, they are facing yeah. elimination, so it's a serious match. Spectate. Oh, I have to spectate. Yeah. Looks like they're just hopping into a game. Will be a Warrior versus Mage. Yep. So it's interesting that Naaman chose not to ban Warrior. We saw Warrior is yeah. probably one of the most banned classes of the entire tournament. Yeah. Um... Not banning Warrior has a lot to do with it, just not being Freeze Mage, so he probably just doesn't feel like he needs to while playing Tempo Mage. Interesting Tempo Mage, we got a Cabal's Tomb already. Yeah. What do you think about that card? I'm not a big fan of that card, personally. <laughs> we'll see how it treats in this match. And sometimes it's just three spells that you'd play in your deck anyway. Yeah. I think the biggest problem is that the, uh, the secrets, you very yeah. often get a secret, and secrets are almost always a tempo loss at the moment. Yeah, without Mad Scientist or anything to like get them out, oh, you never want to be like scientist. playing. <laughs> you never want to be playing secrets just yeah. for their mana cost. Mad Scientist was the most ridiculous <laughs> card I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, so it'll be the Dragon Warrior. A lot of people think that this Dragon Warrior is one of the strongest decks uh, yeah. at the moment. We see it picked really often out of the Warrior lineups. Yeah, it's pretty strong. I. Personally, chose to go with, like Dune Warrior for this tournament. I just thought it was pretty good against the Dragon Warriors, so, which I expect a lot of. I picked the Cthune Warrior as well. I find like in last year's standing, having that one really heavy control archetype is like a good counter pick. Yeah. But everybody bans my Warrior anyways, so I have not played it yet. <laughs> so, I'm in wants to save the Blood Mage Thanos to combo with the Arcane Blast most likely. Yep. The pain of uh, Fairy Dragon. Yeah. All its hand is removal, yet none of them can hit it. It's a pretty good pickup. This is when your options open up, allows the mage. You have yeah. like Mana Worm, Coin Torch, Mana Worm, Frostbolt, yeah. Mana Worm, yeah. Thalnos, Coin Blast. I don't think you'd ever like Coin Torch when you could just Frostbolt. Especially because I guess you want the Mana Worm to trade with the uh, yeah. Fair Dragon, so getting the extra attack is not going to matter. Probably just start with Finley. Unless you think, yeah, developing the 50 bodies is good too. It's amazing how flexible that ghoul is. Yeah. Clears the whole board sometimes, other times you just get a regular 3 drop. Yeah, 3 mana, 3 3. Life tap. Rogue does it too. Ooh, that is good. Yeah. He does have set plays for his next couple of turns, though. He's probably looking for something on seven, because he'll probably just play the Drake in the six drop. One of the things is, uh, in this matchup, I think life taps, it's still a great hero power. You know, you're know, you not going to say it's not one of the yeah. best hero powers, but Mage is trying to put up a lot of damage, so yeah. 
reducing your health is not always the best. Especially since this is a double torch list, uh, not being able to gain armor anymore could be a detriment. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. This is the warrior's playground, though. He's playing first. Anytime they don't have a creature and you just get to put down your big guy, that is the dream yeah. situation as a warrior. Drake, coin, arcane blast. That looks good. We also have Thalnos, blast, coin, torch to full clear. Probably not. Uh, I like Drake a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Draconoid Crusher is going to get shut down. You could use the War Axe instead, which lets you clear off the Drake. Probably. Ooh, and that, uh, that makes it a lot more. Yeah, just War Axe, trade the Finley in, and go face. Or I could save as removal for like a Flame Waker, but I think you just go face with that hand. <laughs> yeah. Especially because you already chipped a bit of damage on the Mage. When he's yeah. at 23, now you're starting to look at just consistently attacking. Naaman cannot mount to any counter pressure. Most he can develop is Thalnos, which is kind of sad. Probably should develop it just to dig since the only thing in his hand right now is burn. He has 6, 9, 12, plus Thalnos sometimes. What do you think about just like missling instead and having like burn to try to finish out the game? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously, since he has life tap, right? Face damage is pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, you could attack into Malkrock, or you could Corruptor and life tap. Since you have Ragnaros, I think it's probably nice to Malkrock, and you just move your yeah. curve. Yeah, I like Malkrock here, too. Attack first, of course. Well, you get Doomhammer, right? <laughs> 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 and Powder is flashing out of existence by the looks of it. Using his RNG powers. That's an okay one, I guess. With the shaman? Yeah, the charged hammer. Charged hammer. There's been a lot of hero powers <laughs> this <laughs> game. We've seen the warrior hero power, then life tap, and eventually we're going to have uh, two yeah. damage hero power. Just a targeted hunter hero power. <laughs> but it's worse because you actually have to point it out the face instead of just hit yeah, and go in face. Click. This is the exact same as Shadow Form. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. All right. So Ooh, those are it's pretty good. Okay, yeah. I mean, they're not the best against Ragnaros, but... I think Ice Block's pretty with appealing. Ragnaris. Especially since he has Life Tap. You know that it's going to come down a lot to like the end game, where you're trying to finish him off before he kills you. So Ice yeah. Block will be rewarding. The problem is, like, you just can't really deal with the Ragnaros. You can, like, Blizzard fireball it, yeah. but then he doesn't have, like, burst in his hand anymore. And the, out if Ragnaros hits Sorcerer's floor. Apprentice, then he's Yeah, he can't do that either. <laughs> yeah. <got> no options. <laughs> and it's a 1 in 3 to hit it, so. You could also uh, use the Corruptor here. You get a life tap in, and for sure you kill the Sorcerer. Yeah. That weapon is just the perfect answer to mirror images. <laughs> High durability with two damage. Uh, We're up to 12 face damage. Yeah. Blizzard ping the Corruptor. That seems good. You could just ping again next turn. Yep. Just kind of buying out time to draw the burn. I think the biggest problem is no creature for the mage, right? Yeah. His whole hand is spells. Hmm. I guess that allows you to ping face to look for the third fireball from the torch, I guess. Alright. Name is just committing that he will have no creatures for the rest of the game. He will only draw spells. Yeah. So now the rag comes down. And the secret is a mystery. Yeah. And uh, Mirror oh, he just goes for it. <laughs> that's, that's pretty right. bold. I think you'd still go for it if I was Mirror Nitty. Yeah, Ragnaros can kill itself, right? Yeah. That's 
pretty good. You're, you're committed to the burn plan now. Like, yep. So the interesting thing is Dragon Warrior has absolutely no way to gain health, as far as I know. No shield blocks, no armor yeah. smiths. Once the hero power is gone, no more health gain. Yeah, he's only got flat 21 there. So yeah. Mm. Like, intellecting. Turned into freeze mage at this point. <laughs> he has. <laughs> he's only got spells. He has an ice block and a blizzard. I mean, you could also just blizzard and roaring torch. Yep. Go for a longer game. But... Mm. The way things are right now, I mean, of course we could see both hands and it wouldn't work out for him. There's just too much pressure from the other side. He'd actually get just pop next turn if he goes for Blizzard Torch. Because of the Grom Slam. Grom Slam, yeah. yeah. So the winning line here is going for the burn. Oh, it's a tough call. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. This is optimistic. He's saying, uh, you know, if the warrior's missing one damage, then uh, he still doesn't lose the ice block. And there's actually no draw to let him win, is there? I don't believe so. Because he would need uh, well, two fireball frostbolt, and he can only have one. It depends on how lucky you are. Yeah, the your missiles all missiles. face. <laughs> we, we could definitely do it with missiles all face. Yeah, because there's, there's just no way powder stopping. Well, technically, you don't need to slab. Yeah. You can just let the Ragnaros finish the job. I think you'd rather just pop at one than popping at five. All right. Uh, as far as I can tell, Mage has no way out of this situation. Unless Neyman has something super sneaky up his sleeve, like another ice block. There could be. Oh, oh that, that is a way, a way out, out of, of the, the situation. <laughs> <laughs> Not the most spells, or like right. hovering around 10 spells. Yep. He didn't kill himself. There's the end turn button. <laughs> he also didn't kill Powder then. He has to gain health because at the yeah. very least the weapon would kill. Oh man. Yogg is trying so hard right now. That's. Uh, start. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so he has it Vaporize the health and, and Effigy. effigy. Yeah. A worthy attempt. Yep. Yeah, I'll try it. You could just see if your opponent screws up, I guess, but there's no real way. Um, I don't think there's a way to screw up this. <laughs> There's a weapon. <laughs> Absolute fear. <laughs> <laughs> Petrified by fear is how you screw up there. Just play around the ice barrier without actually having direct damage in the deck. So, uh, that was kind of one-sided. And that's often why we see the warrior get yeah. banned, right? It just seems to blow things away sometimes. When you get in that order of your opponent's clearing your stuff and you get to drop a creature each turn, just constant big creatures. He had yeah. multiple creatures left over he didn't even invest in. Nyman also didn't draw that great that yeah. game. He had just all burn. Yeah, something like a Flame Waker with that many yeah. spells could have made a pretty big difference. It was just all torches, frostbolts, fireballs. Picks a Shaman. Uh, what was his name of his other deck? Warlock? Yeah, Warlock yeah. Uh, definitely. If it's Zoo, is often unfavored against the Warrior. Yeah. So. It's ancestral Knowledge in his deck. It's interesting because most people have been tending to go with the six O's list with the thing totems. from below and Tuskars. I like the totems as well. Totally totems. Well, we got some dragons at least, so you're not going to be missing dragon synergy for the warrior. I think you play the abusive. Yeah. The hardest part is going to be next turn. You have that ancestral knowledge, but when you play it so early, then your turn after you only have one mana. Yeah, you like have to hit the one drop if you're playing it next turn. And if you're not playing it next turn, there's like almost no point where you'd be able to play it till like turn seven. Mm, that's good. Add a bit of damage. You play into coin ravage and go really yeah. hard. Ooh. Yeah, I don't I don't hate that. 
I actually almost like the totem better than getting overloaded, but uh, I mean you wouldn't play the knowledge till at least turn seven if you don't play it there, so really good four drops available for powder. You got charge and you have two dragons. Slam down the trog, I guess. Got that seven seven coming up. Yep. No execute or anything, so it's okay. But there's gonna be the Corcron Elite most likely. Charge in, get the trump trade. Alright. Well, I mean if you put the seven seven you know, it's not that great here because you're assuming that even if he doesn't have execute, right, he only needs to add three damage yeah. to the board to kill it. But it's probably your best play. I mean, at least this way it kind of just gets to deal with one of the three. Uh, oh, and the execute shows up. Nothing really too great to chip it, though. No blood to ichor, no weapons. You can't yeah. get that activated. And then you're play is pretty weak after that because you're only developing a 3-2. Nothing else to execute in this list though I guess. Yeah, it's the best execute target so... Still just do it. Double, Double turtle, turtle sentinel. sentinel. You don't see them even in a lot of lists. Yeah. Man, don't mind it. It's essentially just like for the overload cards you've gotten to play an extra 3-2 for a bit of tempo. Yep. So, I guess you're just Sentinel, Juggler, juggler and probably Abusive too. I just throw things on the board. If you don't Abusive, you're going to get your board cleared. We can see the Corruptor and then yeah, Trade would remove corruptor everything. Trade. As a Shaman, you almost always want to be ahead on the board, so I like playing the three creatures as well. Does he do it? Get in there and fight, maggot. Hmm. As that blood to Icar, that would have been really good last yeah, turn. Yeah, I've been pretty good with the execute. <laughs> but yeah, still just corrupt here the I mean it doesn't matter, you can trade into either with the fairy dragon as long as you kill the three two and the two three. You could, let's see, play the Twilight Guardian since the board doesn't challenge it and you trade into the 3 2. Encryptor is pretty efficient damage, so. Yeah. I mean, most of the time, you take your 5 mana Fire Elemental <laughs> as a good play. Okay. It's kind of complicated. Hmm. Lava Burst, you clear. You can play Sentinel after. Doom Hammer, you can clear as well. You get the option to keep your abusive or not. Uh, or you can do the big guy and the Sentinel as well. Yeah. None of these options are great. You could even do uh, Flame and then Totem. And then next turn you do Sentinel Doom Hammer. Uh, wouldn't you rather get the sun and all out this turn than the totem? Well, you just miss a totem, right? Hmm? You just miss a totem then, right? No. You, like, you're getting a totem now and then playing the sun and the doom hammer, or you get the, uh, sun and now and you play the doom hammer and the totem. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I kind of like Sentinel better, too. He goes for the totem. Yeah. Maybe he wanted the Taunt totem specifically as a way to protect his Abusive Surge. Yeah, protects it from the Slam that Powder just drew. Yeah, that is a good Slam there to pick up. I mean, there was no other way to kill the 7-7 seven seven in this case. Yeah. Now the Dream would be the other Execute. Not quite. That was still really good. Uh, Well, with the Spell Power, the Lava Burst full clears, Lava and then your Sentinel is going to clean Sentinel. up. Your power. Uh, I, I don't know if I agree with that one. I like the lava burst. You remove both the overload mechanics after. 
Guess I get to keep your two one around for chip damage. Yeah. It's so rare that you can get that nice clear. It was just because he happened to totem on the previous turn where we were even debating that, and he got spell power that allowed him. So it's yeah. interesting to see him pass up that play. Well, kind of like the taunt. Go armor up, Finley taunt. Next turn, you got Ragnaros. Since both the taunt and the crusher have the same amount of health, and the taunt requires dragon synergy. Yeah. Taunt probably then gets lava bursted, and. Yeah. I guess developing the blood to Ikiru doesn't help too much. Ah, uh, so he's offered life tap, shaman hero power, and druid hero power. So he passes on life tap, which, yeah, I mean, I can't fault him for, right? Yeah. He's getting his face shaman. That's really good. Yeah, the perfect curve <laughs> shows up in hand. Yeah, kind it's going to be hard for Ragnaros to do any good as well. Lava versus Feral. Fish. Yeah, you can't trade into the Finley. You don't have, like, you don't have infinite time. Okay. Warrior's at 21. Shaman has 8, 11, 17 max damage next turn. Which means with damage draw, he could theoretically kill him. Yep. Oh, that's cute. The spell power. Yep, gonna spell guarantee power, the blood cleanup. Anchor. Even saves the two health by using the Finley instead of the hero power. So that was the punishment for not killing the Finley with the 3 2. I mean, he also gets the 3 damage face. He'd be at 25 instead. It was just so unlikely yeah. that Finley would make a difference there, right? It's like both slams were played, and then spell power shows up to make something exciting happen. Doomhammer, an absolutely atrocious draw. You're not going to be able to play it for two more turns, and the game's going to be decided by that point. So he has 15 damage right now, which would leave him at 6. Which... Warrior's going to take multiple turns to kill the Shaman still. I kind of just like to full face push here. You could potentially pick up one of the creatures with the wolf. Yeah. Ooh. Max board control. Not uh, I, I like it. You have the dim hammer for like going. Re like for the, the longer the game lasts, thing you having this like in dim hammer helps more. Yep. Mm, Croc's kind of nice. Yeah. It's funny how Ragnaros is the biggest creature, but you don't want to play him because it's random. <laughs> Uh, oh, not lucky. Yeah. That is that's the worst really good weapon. when you get it off a of muster, but right now, it's not the greatest. I think that's the worst weapon, right? Uh, curse blade. Okay, cur yeah, curse blade. <laughs> 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 <For sure. laughs> there's some uh, two two weapons as well, which are pretty poor. Yeah, there's like perdition's blade and the combo weapon. But yeah, that one's pretty bad. Is he gonna face tank this? Puts him down to 15. But I like it. I need to just play the Doom Hammer. Alright, Warrior's getting scared. Especially if he plays the Doom Hammer and you see it coming. I don't see why you, you wouldn't. You 100% play the Doom Hammer. <laughs> it's very, like, m very few Dragon Warriors play Harrison. Warx is nice. Yeah. Are you dead? No, you're fine, right? It's you got one health left. <laughs> <laughs> the six on board, four in hand. So you could do War Axe, Ragnaros. Yeah, Ragnaros is... No, you just play the 9-9, right? It's like directed damage as opposed to just Ragnarosing and maybe removing three. And you get one extra health. Yeah. Not that there's anything that's really going to do one damage, I guess. Ah, yeah. uh, that'll do it. Yep. Tying it up, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, that's... Really big for uh, Nyman, considering Zeus most likely has lost deck, so. Yeah, that would have lost. Yeah. Right. 
Okay. Just keeps him in the series. Powder has Shaman and Druid. I mean, it's always this weird case where your best counter deck might be the Mirror Mesh, right? Yeah. Depending on what type of Druid he has, if he picks Shaman into Shaman, then it always feels like such a gamble is happening yeah. there that you're saying, like, well, I just hope I win the Mirror Mesh, <laughs> right? That's, that's the way to win here. Oh, that's kind of the problem, right? You can't actually target everything, so there's some way you just have to say, I have to win the mirror. Yeah. I have to win an unfavored, so... I don't know. Seems fine. Just I think you'd definitely cue the Shaman over the Druid. Well, here we go. The Shaman mirror match, which... Yeah, I'm definitely not a fan of this fight <laughs> myself. I hate when either Shaman or Zoo Warlock has to go into a mirror match just yeah. because you know your other deck is weaker against it. It just is so yeah. tactless. The Zoo mirror feels worse, though, because it's decided on, like, turn one or two. And you just know who's winning already. <laughs> yeah. You just still have to play it out. Uh, I think Powder has the advantage here because he has the better hero portrait. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd just rather be the Murloc in this situation. Pretty nice opening. Get that Totem Golem out. Could Flame Juggler, but regardless of if it hits or not, the Totem Golem still kills it. Otherwise, two spells to remove. Yeah, you almost always want to be the person with the Totem Golem. Like, Flame Juggler is very weak in pretty much every situation in the mirror. I don't think that made a big difference that it missed. Yeah, it did. Uh, if oh, he actually, uses does. The rock yeah, he'll rider, use Rock yeah. Rider now. I mean, it was huge. It's not gonna do it. Is that a new dialogue light? I haven't it's, heard it's What's the that. Morgul? Oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't heard that yeah. one before. It's the first time I'm hearing it, too, but I like knew that there was an altar in Have it. Have some tea after yeah. the match. <laughs> Alright, so Shapeshift's really nice for Shaman. When you have the Doom Hammer, it's uh, giving you two attacks, so then your Druid Hero Power is adding two damage. Yeah. Sometimes you go for the Priest Hero Power as well. Yeah, better than the Warrior anyways. Yeah, definitely you're better never than gonna the Warrior. You're never going to be at full health, so... Oh, the Totemic Gamble. You have two Totemics, but, I mean, the, the charge would cleanly kill Totem Golem. Yeah. I have not seen many good totemics. This <laughs> this tournament has been mostly normal totems. Hmm. Getting out of control for Naaman. Yeah, it's not. It's like when you look at a hand in this position, it feels every option is good here. You can play wolves, you can play flame tongue, rock biter, abusive. Yeah. Everything's open to you. Do whatever you want. Uh, probably clearing the healing totem. Uh, I mean, so this is loser's match, which means these guys have gotten to see what the decks of their opponents are. And looking at Powder's deck, with the Argent Horse Rider, I imagine there's no Lightning Storm. So I would probably go for the Wolves. But that relies on Naaman also knowing the Lightning Storm's not going to be an issue, because that's an easy way to lose if it was. Yeah. Then you can pick up the Healing Totem for free. One of the nice things about playing Wolves as well is your hand is mostly low-cost stuff, so getting the Overload out of the way before you draw your higher-cost cards is pretty rewarding. Oh, he's going to trade. Yeah. I don't know if I like that trade. I mean, it, isn't the Totem Golem better than Wolves? And you miss killing the his Totem now. I don't know. The Gamble. Hey, well... Um. I mean, it's not going to have an actual <laughs> effect. It was one of the better ones, but <laughs> yeah, didn't actually matter. So the advantage to the Flame Tongue, I guess, is that you, you do have to kill that now. Yeah. It's in the way of 3 HP that needs to die. Yeah, but you can like just kill it with like Abusive and then Rockbiter, rock biter the Tusker. Seems good. And probably kill the... Healing Totem as well. Yeah, you get a full clear this turn. You're going to have three creatures left over. Place the uh, Abusive Surgeon in the middle for Flame Tongue positioning. I like that. Fight, 
And it's always better to have like the ones you know you want to trade in the middle. That way you have options as far as where you're trading. Yep. This is that point when the game starts to run away. Yeah. Thing from below is nice. You could do lightning bolt thing from below. Still gives you contention to the board. Can't play it anymore. Ah, uh, this could go well. Juggler. Nope. Eesh. That's pretty good to pair with the uh, ancestral knowledge. Probably just. I like flame tongue, and you hit with the Finley. Yeah. Ooh. Damn. One drop's awesome. Next turn you get to do second draw and then remove the overload. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, Alright, so I'm most definitely calling the Flame Tongue. Are we trading with the, like, four damage into the spell power totem, though? I'm not sure if I like that. Yeah, What's... I don't know if I like that either. Might go face. Powder still has the Shaman Hero the power, right? Text. Yep. Yeah, I think I like going face. And not putting four into the totem. And again, this just comes down to like, you've seen his deck. You've seen him play his previous match. You knew what type of shaman this was, and then there's no lightning storm hanging around. Yeah. Which is why you can be so ballsy leaving spell power up. I, whenever I play shaman, I feel like I never get these curves that Naaman has this time. <laughs> like every single turn, he's used his mana efficiently, right? Yeah. Right down to the overload removal even being used to maximum efficiency. Yeah. It's just the dream. It's playing really well, too. I haven't seen any mistakes from either of them. Nope. Definitely killing the flame tongue it just represents the most damage and you're not taking damage while killing it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's always a nice uh pretty thing much to get. the nail in the coffin for powder. Just can't deal with seven seven. Nah, you might as well kill spell power, right? Yeah. That little bit extra won't matter. Well, maybe a hex off the top, which is unlikely to even be in his deck. Yeah. Yeah. So, hero power, thing from below, Squire. Kill the... Why don't you just kill the 3-2 and the 2-1? Yeah, why not kill the... Oh, he's going to charge the 3-2. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. I like the thing from below, Squire Hero Power better. Yeah, because then if he hits the thing from below with the 7-7, seven, seven, you can yeah. use the charge to kill it's it next turn. It's a lot easier to kill than doing it this way. Mm, I mean, you're close to killing him. You have uh, 5 damage off. And then you have 8 on the board and then 5 in hand. We have six because the hero power. Oh yeah. Oh, sniped. Really yeah. <laughs> the so juggles are on name inside this match, that's for sure. I think I'm either just drew. Yeah, it's pretty conservative. I don't think it matters too much. Is there any way out of this situation? Um, Start going face with the doom hammer. No, he's just oh, got too well, much health, right? The taunt helps, but if it wasn't for the taunt, he'd just be dead. Yeah, that's true. Light protects me. So, Nyman's just missing two damage here, and he has three draws, draws to hit it. Mana and efficiency will be a problem, I guess, because he can't play Doomhammer after he draws and the Lava Burst. Yeah, even if it's just... There we go. No. Yeah, it's just game. Because he took the extra damage. Oh yeah, he took two extra from yeah. hitting Juggler twice. Hitting twice. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, you counterpick Shaman and a Shaman. And a Shaman won. Never would have expected <laughs> a Shaman to come out on top. <laughs> I, I would have bet that Shaman won. That's going to put it up 2-1. Uh, what was the last deck? Uh, Druid. Druid? Okay. Yeah. So there's there's been a lot of Druids at this tournament. I've seen...
Cthundrid, Yagdrid, Nazothdrid, and no old god Drid. <laughs> yeah. Life coach was absolutely wrecking people, and he didn't have any of the three old gods in his Druid deck. Yeah, he had uh, the Cenaris and Anixia, so that's kind yeah, of the, the top Anixia. end he is. But it's cool to think that there's that many different druids kind of being brought by all kinds of professional players to this. Yeah. I'm not too sure on the Enzoth Druid, but... Yeah, that one was, you know, maybe <laughs> leaving a little bit still to be ironed out. Yeah. That was that uh, Gara had brought the Nazoth Druid. Yeah, but it's working out for him, so... Well, he lost the first series. I didn't yeah. see the second one. I don't think he's played again yet. Hmm. They both have kind of even hands. Nothing too spectacular, but enough pieces to put together a good contention of the board. Whoa. That's weird. He can't play the anti-overload yet. Mm. You're if you're not doing that, you're tunnel trogging. I, I think I'd rather tunnel trog even though it was off curve. But the 7-7 seven is going to be pretty big. Oh, wow. You got, I mean, Coin Drake was already good, right? But now you got Fandral. Yeah, you just play the Fandral. Do you, though? He's going to maybe die to, like, Lava Burst. It, for sure, I think it dies when it, you play it out. So, let's say it gets Lava Bursted. Then you're just getting kind of faced by 3 3, and you have to wrath. Ooh, two lightning bolts and a sentinel. That's some dirty clear. Now, it's funny to think, like, Fendril's so important, so it's sad to see him die. I mean, in fact, it was just a normal 4 drop. And yeah. any 4 drop that took two spells to clear got great value for you. Yeah. Like, a lot of people just try and, like, as good as Fendril is combo together, you kind of just, like, you can't save it in that position. You're not going to go off curve and like coin the drake and then have an unoptimal turn on five well, let's say he did play the seven seven then i think dropping the drake was pretty valuable since you had spell power that uh, seems the score is uh needing to be updated as one of the shamans one it was the yeah, shaman diamonds up to one so powders shaman uh has lost and yeah. has another win if we get production to So you're looking for the big taunt, I guess. So far, name has had no hexes. Probably knows there's no hexes. That 510 taunt is going to be almost insurmountable if you have the board clear at that point. Yeah, kind of just trying to clear as much of the board to have the Ancient War get you back into the game. We're so close to being able to kill it. Both Flame Tongue and Horse Rider are one off, and we're going to be one man off, both. Yeah. But that big taunt is a nightmare to actually deal with. Yeah, and two of the four three mana, I mean, three damage spells have been used already with two of the lightning bolts being gone, so it's just rock biters to fill in the extra damage. Production. <laughs> <laughs> Production, name and shaman has won against Powder Shaman. So, uh, he didn't play the taunt. He's really yeah. saving that coin for something. Maybe the Yogg Saron. Whoa. We didn't see that last game. We didn't see that. That would have been game. quite a swing turn. <laughs> I don't think anybody was playing around AoE. I mean, it makes sense, right? Since he's playing the Eternal Sentinel build. Yep. So that might be a big factor. And he just wanted to play the Elemental Destruction, which led to him wanting to play the Elemental, I mean, the Ancestral Knowledge and Eternal Sentinel build. So if you do Totem Golem, Sentinel, Hero Power, and Trade, it's kind of solid. I think that Destruction is going to be almost a dead card. Yeah. The Shaman has to clear the board. He has no creatures left, so I don't yeah. know how you would win from there. You want to be the one with the board control. If you're not the one with board control, then I'm onto Destruction. It's not going to save you. Teacher coin swipe. That's a nice play. I guess that's what he was saving his coin for. The one ones are very hard for Shaman to clean up efficiently. Basically, in this match, the Shaman's an odd pressure to kill the Druid first. So, when you're taking time to trade on things like those one ones, you're missing a lot of face damage. Yeah. Uh, 
to probably flame tongue with the Sentinel to kill off the teacher. And could have done flame tongue, horse rider abusive to kill the teacher completely with that. He's used up his mana now. Probably spell power totem face and play the horse rider. I like that. You don't really want to trade spell power because it's going to get a heal. But yeah. then you could also take away the druid's momentum on the board by trading. Yeah, it makes it less likely for him to be able to clear the flame tongue if you kill one of the one one two, since just the hero power doesn't kill it anymore. Yep. So if he wants to protect the flame tongue, he might trade the spell power in. But I think it's definitely a flame tongue trade there, and decide if you want to trade or not. Yeah. Don't worry Stuff about the as well. Okay. So you only missed one damage doing that, which is uh, saving your totem then. I like yeah. that play. Big Taunt. You could do Power of the Wild and Power of the Wild again. Power of the Wild, summon a 3 2. Power of the Wild, buff them. Yeah. And you could kill Flame Tongue. And you can Wild Grove to Yaw just in case you need it next turn. Yeah. How many spells? Well, we haven't seen that many. Maybe like uh, six spells at most. Yeah, three more are being added now. And then after Yogg, you have that big taunt. So if Yogg clears the board, you're in a great position. And Nyman just doesn't have that much in his hand. No, to you need... To refill or... Like, Elemental Destruction Destruction's just a dead card. That can help. Good yeah, like tap. Up. Steady shot's not bad. Yeah. Life tap and steady shot are just the two that he wants to miss. He gets to choose between <laughs> and he both gets of both them. life tap. <laughs> steady shot. Yeah, definitely like life tap though. Okay. I was going to say you abuse of the 2 1 and run it in. You can do a full trade if you want. But your board's uh, getting pretty low HP then, so Yogg has a good chance to clear. Yeah. I think also seeing him wild growth at 8 mana. You have to assume Yogg's coming, right? Yeah. Nobody wild gross at 8 mana. Yeah, there's not anything different in Druid that's different from 9 to 10 besides Yogg. Yep. So it's definitely in the back of his mind. Face. Well, oh, I suppose if he's Yogging, then what does it matter, right? Yeah. No reason to trade. Let's just get some face damage. I I think I would have liked abusive on the Me healing too. totem to trade into the two two at least, especially once you had uh, once you had the life tap. Well, he's not gonna yog such restraint. I think like I'd play the abusive just no matter what. Actually, like even if you wanted to go face, I think you'd still play the abusive and hit face. Have we reached the elemental destruction? Five. Almost reached nine. the. Spell damage to face <laughs> for the win. 5-10. So. I mean, That's I nice guess player. you elemental destruction. So you trade Finley, destruction. Uh, you can for sure kill it with uh, horse rider abusive. And then potentially you have to trade your remaining horse rider. But if you rolled high, you wouldn't. Yeah. The biggest you problem is going to be overloaded, right? There's no sentinels left. Yeah, there's no more sentinels, so he's just not going to have the five mana next turn. Ah, low roll. Yeah. I guess you just all reverse then. Be like as efficient with your damage as possible and not put six into it. Well, this has got to be a yug, right? I mean, maybe you draw a swipe or something and you'll play that, but. Ah, uh, it gives you the choice to not yog, right? But it's yeah. such a tease. Like, I think in any normal ladder match, you say, "Yeah, this is a yog turn. I've cast spells. He's not going to kill me." Yeah. I I think you're not ahead enough to not yog. Cause like, you can say that the yog just potentially backfires a little bit and puts you in a more of a position to die. But oh, baby. I don't think he's there. I always hate tracking because it doesn't tell you what you threw away. Yeah. That could be huge. Oh. That is huge. <laughs> oh, and a sprint. <laughs> Absolutely massive. 
That's better than a bog creature. He's got armor. No. Yeah. His hand's full. He can even armor this turn. Ah, oh, that hurt. That. You, you definitely can't enter <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> An armor. <laughs> uh, but I mean the taunt. Yeah. Like, clear the board and put a 7 11 <laughs> taunt. <laughs> filled your hand completely. Oh, that's just the strength of Yogg, right? You just sometimes yeah. go, just win unfavorable positions. Oh. Uh, and of course, the shaman's overlord for yeah, 7, so. 3 mana. Versus the 7 11 Yogg. Naming cracks a bit of a smile there, because <laughs> there was not a lot he could do to prevent yeah. that from happening. You just can't let Yogg get you down, because then you'll just always be salty. Yeah, there's a lot of Yogs in this <laughs> tournament. <laughs> At least it didn't uh, shadow step. Could always be worse. Uh, I'd rather have a 7 Eleven than an Ellie Yogg. Yeah, you know, 7 Eleven taunts not. Yeah. Bad. Okay. Um,. I don't think there's any way he can lose now. You can play more taunts. The big AoE shocker clear from Naaman's already been used. Yeah. Pay attention, class. Pyro would have to try really hard to lose from this position. It's a little bit greedy. I thought he would play true to the claw. Just to make sure there was nothing crazy. Why didn't he just get the extra... I Actual, uh, well, I guess. An 8 12 showing up to fight. <laughs> Better than anything you could fought. actually play. And it's Brinted and Lay on Hands. Yeah. Drew how many cards? Drew seven. No, eight because of it the overdrew. Yeah, yeah, it overdrew him even. So it's going to come down to the final game. Uh, yeah. Naman has Warlock? Warlock. So, okay. Yeah. It's pretty close. Can't be upset with that. From either position, either, right? Because the yep. Druid, if he gets an Innervate start, can be pretty good. I think uh, the Cthune Druid seems to fare a little better against Zoo, because yeah. Cthune always wins, and the uh, Twin Emperors, the seven mana taunts, are really good in this matchup. Whereas the Yogg Druid, you need to have one of those combo turns, yeah, so you, you rely need, more on your opening. Yeah, you need that, like, Innervate four drop start. It's better when you're on Karn as well, like, just, like, Play a four drop on one, like wild growth on two or something. It's pretty solid. You got an innervate, you got some removal. Uh, zoo hand is absolutely <laughs> terrible. Yeah. No one drop. <laughs> All three drops. Yeah. At least he has the coin with a hand like that. It didn't show on the screen, but powder, powder, full mulligan. And he picked up the innervate, which is what you are looking for. Wraths as well. I think next turn you nourish for mana, and you can still wrath as well. Hmm. Abusive to play it. So your opponent's on coin and didn't play a one or a two, so you're expecting a three. And he takes um, at least. Like, how effective is abusive going into three drops? Would have been great here, right? Could it innervate, nourish for mana, wrath, trade abusive? Full play. Yeah. On the gang boss, on the other hand, though, yeah. that would be as good. And gang boss is kind of the little one you expect a little bit more, because they're more likely to keep a gang boss than councilman. And obviously, if he missed his first turn, he kept something from his opening that was not effective. Probably just going to do four damage to the councilman now, clear it off. Five. Later. Five. I guess you have the four drop next turn, so innovating now makes sense. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, you kill the councilman, but you're taking the the deficit, right? Like, you've used your tempo mechanic, and you, you don't have board control, so to me, that's a really scary position. Yeah, now they're just redeveloping, but leaving the councilman up is, like, just as scary. <laughs> Not going to be happy to see <laughs> that other one come out laughing at you. Yeah. Do you have the yeah double raft's just way too slow, so I have to develop a minion. Can he kill that this turn? He can, yeah. Abusive with... Uh... Yeah, abusive buffs it by three. So I just need any other minion. Yeah, so abusive or uh, gang boss. Yeah. Would do it. 
you have a couple options. You can do the gang bus, you can do the charge, uh, you can do the juggler, and you can even mortal coil if you wanted. Got a lot of options. I think it's just the abuse of an M gang boss. Swipe's not as big since there's no extra mana to hero power. Uh, Crazed Alchemist isn't that great in this matchup. You can switch the uh, big taunts, the 510 taunts. But otherwise, I think you might use Crazed Alchemist on your own creatures just to switch some of the damage around to be more effective. Mm -hmm. You definitely don't want to screw up this turn. This is the last game in the series. If you play it right, you know, you're going to have a chance to advance. If you play it wrong, you're eliminated. So. Get in there and fight, yeah, I like this trade. Oh, no oh really? Go face. <laughs> that was interesting choice. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Yeah, I mean, you played abusive, right? You just put abusive to face. Starts ramping up to the yog. Now at least isn't dead. Yeah. The abusive does trade into it, but. Do uh, like juggler, horse rider, juggler, trade horse rider. I think you trade first. I, I think would. you'd rather have the two one divine shield than the two two ones. You can also trade either the abusive or the gang boss because gang boss doesn't die to the three two, which gets you an extra creature and an extra juggle. Yeah, then you're weaker to swipe. Yeah. I think I'd like just getting rid of the two one. I, don't, I can't believe he didn't trade with the councilman <laughs> last turn. Like, this whole situation would be avoided. The druid board would be empty, and the turn would have been the same from the druid. Uh, he'd have five less damage, so I guess you don't expect the abusive to deal five damage. Yeah. Uh, I like that. Well, yeah, I guess. Don't worry, uh, you'd rather have a 2 1 divine shield than 2 2 ones. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Wild Growth looks good. Yogg is just so strong against Zoo Warlock. Even with a couple spells, you don't really need to do anything. One good spell can often be enough. If you Wrath uh, for one, you can draw a card and then Hero Power. Gives you a chance to draw another spell, powers up the Yogg a bit. Yeah, I like it. He figures Yogg will draw some cards. Yeah. He's uh saw how good it was last game. <laughs> no, there hasn't been too many spells. I guess around between six and I, I think six to eight is probably just too much. I don't like it's four to spells. six or seven. It's a bigger gamble that it's actually gonna do something effective. Gang bust also is not something you wanna play into. Power glory. Drew three cards. This is not doing what he really wants. This is like the opposite of the Rimless. Unless he heals himself. Is that it? Yeah, uh, I know. Hmm. Yeah. The Kabbalist Tomb was the best part of that, where you got like an arcane explosion and a polymorph. A seven spells. It's unfortunate that didn't clear. It's nine damage on board. There's no single draw that can win. You could get up to ten by alchemisting yeah, the Argus. Possibilities. Hmm. Oh, you could do it. Coil the one one, right? Draw damage, then tap damage. Oh. That's lethal. There's nine on board. No, you can't alchemist Leroy, right? No. Oh, nine yeah, on board? Yeah, there's just nine on board. Yeah? <laughs> oh, no. the power of glory! I... Oh! I don't think he thought about that either. I, I forgot about oh. that. Oh, I mean, that actually gained him one health even by attacking. There's yeah. no way. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh man. All right. <laughs> Suddenly, there's like an arcane explosion and a taunt coming down next turn. <laughs> Board's even full, the gang boss won't spawn anything. Yep. Oh, just... That was painful. <laughs> that was so painful. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely didn't remember because you no. <laughs> don't you, you don't give them the one health. It was it was so tricky because the gang boss, like when you get powered glory, it adds a little lightning bolt to say the creature has an effect. Yeah, but the, the gang, gang boss, boss already, already has, has it, so <laughs> oh, that was tough. Powder is just flickering. Yeah, this camera just decided the yog was too strong. <laughs> okay, does he actually does he actually live still? I mean, he might just still be dead, right? Uh, hmm. so arcane explosion removes four damage. I mean, essentially, you don't remove anything by killing the gang boss because it heals you if it attacks. Oh yeah. Uh, and I think you mulch. Mulch. Mulch and hero power and Druid of the Claw. You could also power the wild to add uh, add one health to the taunt, which is probably better than hero powering, because it's one health and you get your guy a little bigger. Alright, but is he oh uh, a taskmaster? I don't think he's gonna live. So you can't attack with gang boss. Yeah. Gang boss can. hurts a lot. Leroy, trade help. one, you have four. No, he doesn't have lethal right now. Four, five, six, six. Seven. Yeah, he has six. Needs three. But if you tap, you have no mana left. Hopefully he doesn't attack with the gang boss again. <laughs> mm. I mean, you might consider it now. You might consider yeah. that the gang boss is, you know, already healed him. You need to get bored to win, so. Would it have been different if he didn't attack? No, it's only one health yep. difference. Three, five, seven, probably. Yeah, that's a gross draw. Doesn't help you at all. Uh, you probably attack with the gang boss just to clear the board. So you could do gang boss and you task the 2-2 two -two and you'll clear the yeah. taunt. And then you clear the 8-2 and develop the... Do you clear the 8-2? I might just push base. I think you clear the 8-2. Oh, he's gonna save the gang boss, so he's forcing him to kill it, but of course it does just go with hero power. Might as well play a ritual for a while. Oh no, okay. Like in the situation where you're clearing with the gang boss, he's gonna be uh, at 13 anyway. That might be almost it. Okay, you polymorph the new gang boss, yeah. you explosion, you can trade on the flame imp, he's gonna be left with um, a 1 1 and a 2 2. And afterwards, like, even if his boy gets cleared, he does have double forbidden ritual, so... Should By the looks of it, he'll be one... Warlock's one off, I think. So he'll need a damage draw, but there are a lot of those. So, Druid is at eight. Yeah, and there's, uh, seven. There it is. Yeah, it is. Well, he's avoided the... This time it's actually lethal. There's <laughs> he's no avoided power glories. That shame would have been really hard to live with, I think. Oh. Uh, yeah, just, just playing checking. around the secret, yeah. Good call. I actually forgot there was a secret because the uh, hand Oof. blocking. GG. Yeah. Actually lethal this time. No power of glory to mess it up. So, uh, that means that Powder will be eliminated. Damon still has to win one more match. He will go on to the decider match of uh, whoever won the previous, or whoever lost the previous series. So he'll be in the decider match for his group. Good games by both of them, though. Yep. I guess we'll be taking a break, and you guys will get to see uh, the conclusion of this in just a couple minutes.